In this video, we're going to be taking a look back at some of the most explosive arguments in 90 Day Fiancé history. From Larissa uninviting Colt's family from their wedding, to David's drinking problem and the fireworks that erupted between two of the show's biggest stars, Anfisa and Paola. Let's dive in. Pedro and the family Chantel. The feud between Chantel and Pedro's families is probably one of the most iconic in 90 Day Fiancé history. I mean, they even got their own spin-off called The Family Chantel. What is it about these two families? Why so much drama? Well, it all started when Pedro and Chantel first started dating and lied to her family about his visa situation back in season four. They told the family that Pedro had come to the United States on a student visa, when it was actually a K-1 visa to marry Chantel within 90 days. Of course, her family became instantly suspicious and they accused Pedro of wanting her just to get his dollars and his green card. And of course, Pedro's family didn't like them treating their son like that. So that started a dramatic and sometimes violent war between the two families. In my face, I'm going to say my culture. In your culture. No, in your culture. No me importa. In your culture. No en la. No pone un dedo en mi cara, please. What made things even worse was Pedro's sister Nicole coming to the US to visit him and staying at Chantel's apartment without letting her know first during 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After. The two women had history of not getting along well and Chantel even accused her not of being Pedro's real sister but in actual fact his secret lover. That is twisted. Is it the first time in my family and the family Chantel are together? While Nicole was in the States, Pedro took her to have dinner with Chantel's family to hopefully address the drama between the two ladies. And as you can imagine, it didn't end particularly well. Here they come. Hello. Hi there. Oh, Nicole. Oh my goodness. Hi. You look so Hello. pretty today. During dinner, Nicole and Chantel started to fight and call each other liars, while Chantel's family accused Pedro of being disrespectful for taking his sister's side instead of Chantel's. It's okay. Okay, okay, no, okay excuse I me. Know. Okay, you can move the chair. You can put. No, your... she's no, not going no, to. Not. She's going to sit there. We're I, a... I, 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 I. Things reached the boiling point when River, Chantel's brother, jumped up, hit a lamp, and pointed in Pedro's direction, which made both men stand up and get into a pretty violent physical fight. Hey, hey, what you say? Shut up, shut up. What you say? What you talking about? What's up? Punches were thrown left and right, and the whole family and producers ended up having to split them up and get into the middle of it to separate them. Things ended with Chantel crying and a very angry Pedro kicking everything on the table. So much drama. After the fight, during an Instagram Live, River addressed the issue and said he didn't initially intend to get physical with Pedro. He was just trying to defend his family. Quote, I'm actually mad. I don't regret it, but I'm mad at myself because no one should get me out of my character, he said. Either way, out of character or not, it made for an iconic fist fight and arguably one of the most memorable scenes ever on the show. What do you think? Was Pedro right for defending his sister? Or do you think he should have stood up for Chantel instead? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. David and Ashley. Season five star David met his now wife Annie after a soul searching trip to Thailand after having divorced his wife of 21 years. But before the couple tied the knot, they had to face some family issues, one of them being their big age difference. David was 48, while Annie was only 24, two years younger than David's oldest daughter. Back in the beginning of their life in the US, David planned a dinner reunion to introduce Annie to his kids, Jacob and Ashley. And let me tell you, Ashley wasn't happy with her father at all. I know my dad, and he can sit there and he can play this all he wants, but we know what's up. You, you ask a question and you don't not? listen for the answer. Because you're jumping in. Because you're asking stuff that's not really your business. While a relaxed Jacob had dinner with his father and soon to be stepmom. Calm down. No, I'm going to say what needs to be said. You haven't seen him in a while. Doesn't Just matter. be happy that you're at least seeing him. It's been a long time. Ashley couldn't help but speak her mind about the situation. And some fans thought she was kind of disrespectful towards her father. For example, during the fight, Ashley told Annie how David had cheated on her mum with multiple women, including prostitutes. Yep, she said that. She also started to accuse him of being an absent father, especially because he hadn't seen her or his grandchildren in two years. 
Now, David wasn't very happy with the way that she was addressing him, saying, quote, people don't talk like that the way you talk to parents. People don't do that. First of all, would you ever talk to your father like that? Hell no. People don't talk like the way you talk to parents. You just don't do that. Some screaming later, after the argument quickly escalated, Ashley got up and threw a glass of water on her dad before storming out of the room. Talk about dramatic exit. And leave. Cool, Bye. Bitch. David claims Ashley was mad because he was getting married again after divorcing her mother and, quote, putting someone before the children and grandchildren, which he said was difficult for her. The hardest thing for Ashley to grasp is that I am coming back here and getting married so quickly that I am putting somebody else before the children and grandchildren. And that's difficult for her. And meanwhile, a very uncomfortable Annie had been left speechless. Quote, I don't know what to say. I really want to know, is it American culture? Do they talk like this with their dad? It was a horrible dinner. What a way to meet your fiance's children for the first time. I clearly want to know is American culture. Did they talk like it with their dad? It's horrible dinner I never had. After the fight went down, Ashley gave an interview where she explained why she had treated her father like that and explained a little bit more about their relationship. She confessed that they were at one point pretty close when she was younger, but then things changed because he travelled all the time with his best friend Chris and he didn't dedicate time to his kids. She also called him an alcoholic and said she didn't believe him wanting to reconnect with his children. Well, we really hope things are better between these two now. I want him to be like a normal dad. He used to be a dad, you know, like at least coming over, having dinners with us, you know, seeing his grandkids and, you know, he, he doesn't even know my kids. He doesn't know my kids at all. Larissa and Colt's cousin. This one is one of my personal favorites. So, Larissa and Colt met through social media before she came to the US from Brazil to live with him and his mother Debbie in Vegas. But Larissa and her mother-in-law didn't exactly get on well and they fought continuously. While still engaged, the couple invited Colt's cousin John and his wife over for an introductory barbecue. During the reunion, John stated that he didn't like the way Larissa treated his Aunt Debbie and he wasn't happy when he found out that Colt and Larissa were looking for a new house to move. Quote, I am concerned about Aunt Debbie, John said, especially if he's going to kick her out on the street. I am concerned about Aunt Debbie, you know. She comes over and she says that she's hurting, but she wants her son to be happy. But she needs to tell him that that's not going to work, especially if they're willing to kick her out on the street. I mean, that's... Colt tried to calm things down in typical culty fashion, but an already angry Larissa started saying that Debbie wasn't the saint that they all painted. As tensions rose, both Larissa and John started screaming at each other, and he accused her of taking advantage of Colt and being in a relationship just for money. You don't understand that Debbie is not the saint that you paint. It's respecting as her elder as an saying. elder she and knowing what she's going through as well. For you have each sometimes. other, don't you? You have each other. You have each other. What does she have? Larissa denied taking advantage of Colt, arguing that he's not a millionaire and he had a car without air conditioning. And she fired back at John by saying she would be a millionaire within a few years and would take him for a ride in her Jaguar. I am the millionaire cheap. Ass is cheap. When I Good luck. My Jaguar. Good. That led to John snapping. I can't pretend anymore, it's just, it's just fake. It's That's not true love, I'm sorry, that's just a lie. And while all of this was going on, what was Colt up to? Colty was just sitting there, cool as a cucumber. Things ended when Larissa uninvited John from their wedding and started screaming my favorite quote ever, period. Who that is a love girl? is that queen will what die. respect I hope that queen that don't I'm you. Or something. I... All that talk of queens dying had you question whether you're actually watching Game of Thrones or 90 Day Fiance. Who knows? After everything had boiled over and Colt had time to mull over everything, he said, quote, I don't know what I can do. I can't really handle someone that is completely irrational and screams and yells. I wish everyone would just calm down and talk through things. Well, unfortunately, Colt, it seems like Larissa was the wrong lady to calm down because although the wedding did happen, John was right all along and that whole true love thing didn't really happen. Colt and Larissa are now divorced. 
I'd love your thoughts on this. Do you think Colt did the right thing, sitting back and letting his fiance, cousin and mum argue it out? Or should he have taken a more active role in defusing the situation? Let me know in the comments down below. Molly and Luis. Molly Hopkins met Luis Mendez while vacationing in the Dominican Republic. And after five months of dating, they got engaged. On season five of 90 Day Fiance, we followed the couple's journey to the altar. And let me tell you, it was anything but peaceful. After getting married secretly on the show, the couple went on to appear on Happily Ever After, where fans watched their marriage crumble down violently. Violent fights, screaming and drama, and a whole lot more drama. The couple got a divorce less than six months after their wedding. After their divorce, Louise said that he would be posting evidence of domestic violence by Molly against him. And soon after that, lo and behold, cell phone videos emerged on social media of a so-called fight between them. Now, what can be seen in the video was a pretty heated argument granted, but given how low quality the footage was, it's pretty hard to make out Molly hitting him. What we can see, however, is Luis repeatedly stating, why you hate me? While she screams back multiple insults, things like, you ain't taking sh from me. Why you hate me? Why you hate me? Why you hate me? Why? Why? Because they got a divorce so soon, Luis couldn't legally get a green card, so a lot of people online speculated that this was all a setup from him in order not to be deported, since there's a clause that says he can still get a green card if it's proven that he was a victim of domestic abuse. Shortly after the video surfaced, Molly told Us Weekly, quote, that is the most absurd thing ever and he is such a liar. I chose to divorce him after he turned into a pompous ass and was hateful to my kids. I never abused him. I did, however, smack the phone out of his hand when he went to show me something and a whole stream of disgusting porn popped up on his phone. I loved him. Sadly, Molly, Louise didn't love you. Just five months after their divorce, he remarried another woman in Jersey and has lived a quiet life since then. Recently, when asked about it, Molly confessed that she believes Luis used her and married her so that he could stay in America, but that she has to let go of the past. Well, we hope that they can both move on happily ever after. David and his friends. Yes, David again. Right, we've talked about David and Annie's relationship and how they met, but what we didn't talk about was a fundamental part of David's life, his best friend, Chris. Chris was a successful businessman. David was unemployed, divorced and broke when he met Annie. So who do you think helped him and financially supported him? Yep, Chris. He helped pay for the dowry to Annie's family, he paid for their wedding, and he even let them stay at his place when they first came to the States together. On their first full day in America and at Chris's house, David and Annie had a welcome barbecue with him, his wife Nikki, and Nikki's brother Antonio. Everyone was having a good time until it started to become obvious that David had had one too many drinks. What's new, right? While the group were chilling outside by the jacuzzi, David started to make some jokes about her accent and that made Annie pretty uncomfortable. Nikki and Antonio noticed that and tried to encourage her to speak up about David's evident drinking problem. Antonio tried to talk some sense into David by making him see just how uncomfortable his fiance was, but the man was just too drunk to care apparently and said that it was Annie's choice, not his. Really, David? Do I really make yeah. you uncomfortable? Yeah, she doesn't want to be around you. She don't want to be around you like that. She's tired of that. This yeah. is your fault that she feel the way she it's feel. Okay. It's all in her face. Look at her. After trying to get David to admit that he had a drinking problem and was in denial, the group turned to Chris, who had been quiet the whole time, pleading with him to talk with his friend. So Chris took David over to one side to have a chat with him, but that's when they overheard Nikki and Antonio talking about how Chris should treat David like a grown man instead of, quote, his mama. David didn't like that one bit and fired back at Antonio by saying, Oh, really? Do you want And boy, did that ramp up the tension. Yes. Don't touch me because you will get Please don't hit him. You will baby. You're my brother. I love you. No, you don't love me. What are you talking about? Luckily, the fight didn't get physical, but it did lead everyone, including a very sad Annie, to the stark realization that David needed help to combat his drinking demons. You got up. Watch your mouth because you don't know me. You know of me. Come on, come on. Sorry, Take sorry, your sorry. ugly ass back outside. You ugly ass. 
And that was it as far as Nicky and Chris were concerned because at the end of that season, they decided not to be part of the show anymore and not to financially support David anymore either. And Fiza and Paula. What happens when you put two explosive women in a room together? Well, you're about to find out. Back in season two of Happily Ever After, Colombian Paula Mayfield was seen talking bad about Anfisa Navas to George, her now ex-husband. Alongside fellow cast member Lauren, we can hear Paula call Anfisa, quote, a mail order bride and a gold digger. She also told George that he could do much better. Quote, she is not that pretty. Last time at the tell-all, George just start talking so bad about his wife. After these comments, Paula got a lot of backlash from fans of the show, so she apologised for saying these things. But Anfisa wasn't prepared to take the apology, because following on from these events during the tell-all reunion of Happily Ever After Season 3, the two women came face to face. After a bit of a mix-up regarding producers trying to tell George to sit up, Anfisa responded by giving Paula the finger. <laughs> and of course, Paula hated that. She started calling Anfisa out in the middle of the show. But don't give me the finger. I'm not doing anything yeah, I'm to give you. you the finger. No, I'm not For doing it. I'm actually looking at him to point at that someone is calling you. Don't be rude. Anfisa fired back by saying, You're going to tell me to behave? Oh, you should whatever. have behaved last season. I'm just stuck with him. Oh, don't. Don't. What? You're going to try to hit yeah, me? Yeah, I am. Oh, try it. Try. Seriously, try. I guess. And that led to Anfisa standing up, walking up to Paula and trying to physically fight her. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. Girl, I can take you down. But you know well, what? Do I it. don't want to go to that level. So oh, you're already below I that need level. Water. I don't need to look yeah, at your face. Shortly after the incident, the two women took to Instagram and Twitter to address the issue. Anfisa, when asked about why other cast members always talk trash about her, said, quote, to try to stay relevant and deflect from their own problems. Meanwhile, Paula, when asked if she got scared when Anfisa walked up to her, just replied, me, with a laughing emoji. She went on to say that she would like to see Anfisa try to knock her out, but she wasn't on that level and she was better than that. Quote, violence is never the answer for sure. And she's absolutely right about that. Violence is never the answer, kids. Sadly, that wasn't the last of the matter. While pregnant, Paula refused to be close to Anfisa, saying she didn't know how Anfisa would react and wanted to keep her baby safe. Later, while George was still in prison, Anfisa quit the show when she didn't get the pay rise that she was after. That led to her going on a foul-mouthed crusade about the show and the participants, saying, quote, We had to become the show's little b and do whatever they tell us to do, like some people. And that last part in particular, like some people, seemed to really upset Paula and Russ, since they made a very long YouTube video addressing what Anfisa had said. They didn't like the fact that she had generalised the entire cast with that comment, and they went on to say that they were very grateful to 90 Day Fiancé for all the good things that it had given them. They even went on to accuse Anfisa, indirectly without naming her, of asking for ridiculous amounts of money, quote, something along the lines of Kim Kardashian. Paula added, quote, calling us little bitches of the network just because she didn't get what she wants is ridiculous. If she hates the show so much, maybe she needs to move on and stop tagging 90 Day Fiance and talking shit about the cast. Drama. These two, I think, will just never get along. Are you team Anfisa or team Paula? Let me know in the comments down below. And guys, do me a favour, if you've made it this far to the end of the video, hit that like button to show your support and make sure you've also subscribed so that we can stay connected. Also, check out the videos that are on screen now. I think you're going to love them. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.